Hello my lovelies! My name's Gilbert Dolfallion and the plan for today is to finally go over how I create the patterns for my embroideries. I thought now is a time when people might want something new to try, plus I find embroidery extremely meditative and relaxing and I hope that you guys will too. More importantly, however, I, the great technologically incompetent Gilbert, finally worked out how to do a screen recording on my computer. Now I have a couple of disclaimers to start off with, so bear with me. This is the technique that I have developed in order to do my own designs and anything historical, anything that is copyright free or comes under fair use. I am not, and I will not, teach you how to remove watermarks from an image, and I highly recommend being cautious about what images you use, especially for commercial use. You can also buy vector images that can be used for commercial use if you want, and they have the great advantage that they come with transparent most of the time, so the line art is already prepared and they're much easier to use. Secondly, I am not a professional Photoshop user, and there are probably a ton of ways to streamline this. I'm just showing my method because I've been asked quite a few times, and it can give you a head start to start developing your own method to get things the way that you want them. So for this I'm using Photoshop but any other image processor will work just as well, this is just what I have and what I know. It's also ancient, so if it looks strange that's what 10 years will do to you. The important tools that you need on your image processor are layers which will obviously come with transparencies and channels. I also find having a grid system that you can turn off and on really useful for getting things nice and evenly spaced. You do not need a tablet or any other type of fancy art tool, I literally just use my mouse and quite often my touchpad. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the editing. The first step is to make yourself a new canvas that is exactly the size of your embroidery. I have made a preset for 15cm embroidery which is the size for hoops and canvases that I do as preference but it's just a 15 by 15 centimeter canvas. You should be able to work in inches if that works better for you. Don't worry about pixelization, you're just printing it out as a pattern for yourself and not having to resize it when it comes to printing will save you a huge headache. Now, if you're making a square embroidery, you can leave this as it is, but if I'm doing a hoop, I like to mark out the circles so I can see the exact space that I'm working in. I use the pen tool to make a circle that fits exactly to the square using the snap to document bounds tool to make sure that it's exactly on the bounds of the space. If you can't just make the outline, to turn the shape into an outline, rasterize it if it isn't already, select it, and then contract the selection by 5 pixels. Once you delete the remainder, you'll be left with a circle that's 5 pixels wide. And don't forget, once you've done this once, you can copy and paste the circle from past patterns. Once your canvas is prepared, you can start to arrange your pattern. As a rule, I start with the images first and do the text afterwards, but where the text is the main feature of the embroidery, sometimes it helps to go the other way around. In this case, we'll start with the art, as that's the main thing I have to show you. I have this image that was taken from a Victorian book on embroidery, so out of copyright, that was digitalised by the Antique Pattern Library, who are linked below. They've done an awesome job and this is an incredibly clean scan, so it'll be an easy start. First, I'll remove anything outside of the image that I want to use. Then I'll open up channels and select all, then remove all of the excess. You can use the rubber or eraser tool, or I just press delete on my keyboard as a shortcut. With the background now transparent, I then select all of the channels again, this time inverse the selection, and then either burn the line art darker or use the pen tool with black selected to darken it. This step isn't so important on this particular image because it's so clean, but you'll see later how important it can be. 
and that's really my basic technique. With your image converted to transparent line art, you can copy it over to your main canvas and start playing around with sizing to get it where you want it. In this case, I want a mirror image, so I make sure I'm happy with the size and then copy it again so that the mirror is exactly the same size. At this point, you'll probably notice that it's not fitting into the frame as nicely as I wanted to. This is the point where I'll go in, copy paste parts, remove, move and or rotate them and fine tune the image so it fits how I want it to. In this case, this image wasn't quite what I wanted, so I've switched over to another image from the same book that I've already prepared and it's not quite a smooth semicircle. So first of all, I'm gonna crop this extended bit off but I like it, so I'm gonna copy it into a new layer and then play around with it and see where I want to put it. I use a lot of rotations when I'm playing around like this to have a look at what looks good where, and every time I decide that I'm happy with a piece, I'll copy the whole thing into a new layer before I start on the next major set of changes. So I can always delete the layer and go back to where I was happy, even if I go past the point where I can erase it on the history. You can also rotate pieces within the same layer if you're not moving them too far. If I'm moving a big section, I like to copy paste it onto a new layer, but if I'm just doing a couple of leaves or a branch, then quite often I'll just do it on the same layer. When I think I'm happy, I start to put in the text, and text art is really a skill onto itself, but I honestly just play around with fonts and sizes until I'm happy. The thing that I found makes the biggest difference is playing around with the height between each line. This is also the point where I use the grid a lot to make sure that everything is centred where it needs to be, but I also sometimes use it to help keep everything at an even distance. And remember that if one leaf or flower or something is overlapping the text, you can still go back to the art and move that one bit. So here is another piece that I made alterations to. This is one of the illustrated letters from Good Omens. Unfortunately, it's an I and I need an F for flash bastard. So I cleaned it up and then used the text tool to make an F in a matching font underneath, obviously spending a little bit more time on it than I am here. And then I overlaid the I on the top. Of course, if I needed an S, then I would have been stuffed, but in this case, I knew I could turn an I into an F, so it worked perfectly. So this technique works great when you're using something that's already black and white and very clean, like the images from the book that I've been showing you, or your own line art that you've drawn and then scanned in. But what about when the image isn't as clear? Here we have a scan or a very good photo of an extant piece of Italian 16th century embroidery from the Met that's in the public domain. I used the border of this for Aziraphale's shirt. With this, since the main embroidery is white, the first step I want to take is to invert the colours. Then I'll change the colours on the canvas to black and white, and back to colour again, to remove as much colour information as possible, but to allow me to use colours if I want in the processing. The final step to prepare the image is to play around with the brightness and contrast a bit to get the line art as prominent as possible before I go back to the channels and remove the background again. Then I unselect, and it is important to unselect or remember what you've just deleted, reselect, inverse and darken the line art again. And I'll repeat this until I'm happy with the quality of the line art. Once I am happy with it, I'll start to clean it up, and since I only used the border for Aziraphale, I just focused on cleaning the border. Another thing that can help see what you're doing is to put a coloured background under your transparent layer, as it will show up any areas that have been missed. But do this after you're done with the channels, or the background will impose itself onto the line art. As a side note, when you get in close on this image, you can see the individual stitches and it makes me so happy. Once you're happy with it, again, you can copy and paste it over to your main canvas and get the sizing set up how you like it. As a third, even more challenging example, this is a photo I took myself of the medieval paintings on a town hall ceiling because I knew at the time I wanted to do something with this dragon design. The first step I'll take is to select the part that I want and copy that so I don't get distracted by the rest of the photo. Then I'll rotate it, get rid of any excess. Thank you. 
and because this was taken at the ceiling I'm going to use the warp option to try and even out the perspective. I did it by eye but you can use grids on your canvas or the line tool to make your own grid if you'd like to be more exact. Then I finally move over to a clean canvas and again change it to black and white and then back to colour. From here on out it's exactly the same as before, brightness and contrast, select all channels, delete and then select all again, inverse and darken the line art. Rinse and repeat until you're happy with the result. With this one I had to do quite a lot of touch-ups to the final line art. So first of all I like to go through with the rubber or eraser tool and get rid of as much excess as possible. And then I'll go through with the pen tool to neaten it up on the actual line art. In places where I could I copy pasted other parts onto the missing part but otherwise I'll just carefully draw it back in. I find in these cases, rather than trying to draw freehand without a pen, my software will let me draw a line between two sections by pressing shift when I do the second click. I use this technique with the rubber as well when it's needed. And after much unfilmed faffing around, I can copy paste the final product onto a final canvas and get it set up to print. If you want to simulate the colours you want to embroider in, you can use channels for that as well by selecting, inverting, and then using the colour that you want on the pen tool on a large diameter. You do want to keep a black and white copy for the final print though, so I normally keep a coloured one and a black and white one saved. So here's an example of what I mean about keeping the copies for printing. This is an embroidery that I did as a request for a friend. I mocked it up in colour but kept the black and white version underneath so that I could save it without the colour to print. In this case it obviously does make a huge difference because it's mostly black anyway but it does make enough of one. And here's also a photo of the final embroidery so you can see that it changed a little in the end but the coloured version still gives me a better idea of what I'm looking at than the black and white one. And finally, once you're done, save your image. I like to keep the Photoshop file in case I want to go back and tweak something, but also so that I can go back and raid parts I've already used for future works. I normally save a PNG file to print as well because it just works better on my computer and that's just my preference. So also save it for yourself in whatever format you like to print in. Printing is very simple because we know that the pattern is exactly the size that we want. All you need to do is print it at 100% and that should print out the exact size that you want for your hoop or your canvas or whatever you're making. And that's my technique. It's a lot of playing around with it once you've got it on the canvas. The main step is separating that line art. Once you have that, the fun begins. And really each one is different so you kind of have to play around with it and find what comes out for the one that you're doing. If you stick with it then it will reveal itself in time. But I hope it gave you inspiration to get going with a pattern or two for yourself. My question for you today is what's your favourite piece of stitching or embroidery that you've done or seen? It doesn't have to be embroidery, it could be a piece of top stitching that you thought was particularly well done for example. Thanks for watching it through to the end and if you enjoyed it please think about hitting that thumbs up and subscribing if you aren't already and of course massive thank you to all of my subscribers, you mean the world to me, thank you for sticking with me. Please continue to take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay home and stay sensible and I shall see you again soon, bye!